In this video, we're going to walk through the input and output configuration that we'll be using for the rest of this course. We'll select and name our inputs and outputs, and then check that we're properly receiving our signals. This image shows an example system configuration. We have a mixer driving a digital signal processor, which in turn drives a PA system, represented here by a single powered loudspeaker. This setup has been chosen to be representative of a typical sound system that we might encounter in the field. We'll take a split off the output of the mixer into our audio interface, along with a split off the output of the DSP, and a measurement microphone placed in the space. That's all we need to start taking measurements using the signals leaving the mixing console. But for convenience, let's connect Smart's signal generator to the mixer. We'll also route the output of the signal generator back to an input on the audio interface. This is called a loopback and will be helpful later if we want to measure the response of the mixing console. We'll start by restoring Smart to default configuration. Go to the Config menu, choose Manage Configurations, and click Restore Defaults, then click Yes. Smart will relaunch in its default state. Smart's letting us know that there are no measurements configured, so click OK and let's set some up. We're presented with the I.O. Config tab of the Configurator. Notice the buttons for input devices and output devices. We'll start by configuring our inputs. In the top table, Smart shows us all the input devices it could find when it started up. The OK in the status column means the device is ready for use. If your device doesn't show up or shows a status of NC for not connected, Smart's having trouble talking to it. In this case, you'll want to make sure that it's connected, powered on, and recognized by your operating system before launching Smart. I'm going to be using the OctaCapture interface, so I'll check Use next to that device. And once I do that, the bottom table populates with that device's inputs. When I connect my inputs to my audio interface, I like to start at the end and work backwards, so I've connected things like so. I'm only using inputs 5 through 8 for this, so I'll uncheck 1 through 4. The channel name is reported by the device's driver, but we can give it a friendly name, which is how it will show up within Smart. So let's click and name it Mike. Now make sure to press Enter to set the name, and as soon as I do that, Smart helpfully moves down the list so I can start typing the next name. Now that our inputs are set, let's click over to the output side of the table. Smart has selected all of the output devices available for use, so let's uncheck everything other than the one we want to use. I've chosen outputs 7 and 8 for my signal generator. 7 is routed to the mixer, and 8 is my loopback. So I'll name those. And then I'll click OK. If I make the window a little bit bigger, what we can see is that Smart automatically creates a spectrum measurement engine for each selected input which is why I unchecked all the ones we're not using. Now we're going to confirm that we're acquiring all the signals properly. Click here to open the signal generator and choose the two outputs. Turn on the signal generator and then click the Run All button to start all the spectrum measurements. Press the zero key on your keyboard to switch to the multi-spectrum view and verify that all inputs are receiving signal.